for the Pentagon when I was in my teen years. And during this period of time, I met a Dr. Henri Kawanda. Now, Dr. Kawanda is known as the father of fluid dynamics. He had over 500 patents on the way fluids flow around objects. Uh, he had uh, flying saucers, literally things that levitate by using uh, air flowing over oh. a surface, but with no moving parts. And he built the world's first snowmaking machine uh, that turns liquid water into ice by f passing it through a special nozzle that he developed. And so he was 80 when I met him, and uh, I was 17. We were working at a Pentagon think tank, and we, he had a birthday party. And at the birthday party, I said, I hope I'm as healthy and as strong as you are when I'm 80 years old. And, and Dr. Coenda said, Patrick, when you're 80 years old, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and so everyone laughed at the party and, and, and uh, thought it was uh, a nice little joke. And, and a few days later, he called me into his office uh, and he said, Patrick, I want to share something with you that I've worked on all my life for 60 years. And he said, I will not complete this project in my lifetime, but I feel that you will. So I'm going to give you my lifelong project, which has to do with finding the fountain of youth. Because hmm. he said there really is a fountain of youth. He said water is the most important nutrient that we put into our bodies and it's the most ignored. And he said that water all over the world is different from, uh, from location to location. And so he began to give me his research on water. And basically, he said that, that the best water in the entire world was found in a place called Hunza, up north of Pakistan. And he said that the properties of Hunza water, which had what he called anomalous properties, uh, were such that if I could build a machine to duplicate those properties, that uh, I would bring Hunza water to all the people in the world, and it would profoundly affect the entire world. And so he gave me his research, and I began my lifelong quest for Hunza water, for the properties of it. And so I began uh, search, researching water, and I tested every kind of energy field that you can imagine trying to change ordinary water into Hunza water. And I tried magnetic fields and, and acoustic fields and electronic, different kinds of electronic fields and, and all kinds of things. Finally, after almost 30 years, uh, discovered the real secret of Hunza water was a special mineral found in the water, a special kind of colloidal mineral, which, is, uh, which gives it all of these anomalous properties. And so um, began trying to duplicate that mineral in my lab and finally duplicated it after a period of, uh, of a few years and came up with a product called Crystal Energy, which was the very first, first development in this, in this field. And from that developed a, a, a dry powder mineral called microcluster uh, powder. Uh, and this is all nanotechnology. These minerals are very, very small. They're perfectly spherical. Uh, they're about five nanometers in diameter. Uh, 1,800 of them would fit side by side across a red blood cell. And these minerals have very unusual properties. One of these properties is that they can, uh, they can coat nutrients and protect the nutrients from oxidative damage. They can help carry nutrients into the body so that the body uh, can absorb more of those nutrients. And it was during this period, uh, and I, I was taking uh, this, these products all along, and, and friends kept saying, what are you taking? What are you doing? You look younger than you did 15 years ago. You look better or whatever. Uh, and so I started giving these products away and eventually started, uh, started producing them because I couldn't keep up with, with all the, the thousands of people who wanted them. I, I was reading some work by Albert St. Georgie, the Nobel Prize winner in chemistry for metabolism, for metabolic uh, uh, research, who he also discovered vitamin C. That's also his hmm. claim to fame. All the food we eat ultimately breaks down into hydrogen, which is burned by oxygen, creating energy that powers our body and the end result of that that long biochemical process is the production of water uh, and the release of energy which which runs our bodies and the second thing that he said is that no electron moves in the body unless it's coupled to hydrogen in other words uh, in you know in, in chemistry we're pretty much uh, in college chemistry textbooks it shows electrons somehow mis mysteriously entering into uh, a, a chain of, of chemical reactions in the body 
without explaining where the electrons come from or how they're transported. And when uh, St. Georgie said that electrons cannot be transported without hydrogen, uh, I became very excited. And the other thing that he said is that all living systems store hydrogen in their tissues in such a way that it doesn't require enzyme action to release the hydrogen. And so uh, I began looking for hydrogen. Oh, th the other thing is that he gave a chemical reaction that was done in the early 1920s uh, and published in medical journals uh, for measuring hydrogen in biological tissues. And when I looked at the chemical reaction, I realized that there was only one form of hydrogen that would react that way as an indicator, and that was H minus, or negatively ionized hydrogen, that's hydrogen with an extra electron. Uh, and so I then developed a number of instruments for measuring hydrogen, um, something called photon detachment. Uh, I used the chemical test that uh, Albert St. Georgie used, and also a uh, re redox meter, uh, similar to what you've seen so far, that, that meter that Dr. Higgins has shown mm -hmm. you. And eventually found that all living fluids of every living organism, um, every fluid fr from, from any living organism is loaded with negatively ionized hydrogen. And when, for example, if you take an organic orange that's fresh off the tree and you measure the hydrogen, it has a tremendous amount of negative ionized hydrogen. But if you let the uh, orange sit around in your kitchen for uh, a week or so and measure it again, it's lost a lot of its hydrogen. And also when we cook food, all the hydrogen is gone completely. It disappears. And so I realized that there was something, a missing ingredient no one had ever talked about in food, which is H minus negatively ionized hydrogen. And I realized that I had made some kind of a discovery of something in fresh food uh, that has been missed. So the, the strange thing is, is that I, ha I had a sample of Hunza water that was nearly 40 years old that I'd been researching all those years. And I went back to my sealed bottle. I had a, uh, it was flame sealed uh, in a tube so that it would maintain its properties. But I went back and I broke open the, the neck of the bottle and measured the water from Hunza land for H minus and it was loaded with H minus. So not only did it have these special minerals, but it also had negatively ionized hydrogen. So then I, I began this research developing uh, an H minus generator and I pumped this H minus uh, hydrogen into water and then started drinking it and the energy that I got was so profound it was unbelievable. I, I was sleeping uh, an hour or two a night and, and had the most energy I'd ever had feeling wonderful and I thought with, with the other products that I was feeling so great I didn't think anything could get, could get better. and so. I started shipping friends some of this water. Now the bad thing about the water is that it wasn't stable. It would only last for you know a couple of days and then you had to replenish it. Uh, but friends, I'd ship uh, five gallon buckets to friends by uh, FedEx and they'd drink water and they'd say, what is this? I have the most energy I've ever had. And so then I, I began trying to figure out how to, to get this out so that other people could, could get it into their bodies and discovered that if I took microcluster powder, the original minerals that I had duplicated from Hunzaland, if I took that powder and, and I reacted it with H minus, negatively ionized hydrogen, we generally call it silica hydride, but it's, it's a compound that releases negatively ionized hydrogen when it's diluted in water and is very, very stable as long as it's dry. And so we then gave some out to uh, a few hundred people to try out and the reports that came back were so unbelie unbelievably miraculous. I had no idea that we'd get the reports back. And we're all we are all very deficient in, in H minus. Uh, we are all suffering from free radical damage because uh, we have so many assaults on our bodies every single day. It's been estimated that we come into contact with three million various assaults on our bodies from bacteria, fungus, mold spores, virus, and so forth every single day of our lives. And so our biological terrain, if it's off a little bit, one of those things may uh, dig in and, and begin. Uh, uh, by the way, every single organism, every single pathogen that gets in the body, the first thing it does, and I, I don't know what the mechanism is, but the first thing it does is cause you to dump all your H minus in oh. your urine. Um, and the result is that, uh, is that you become more deficient. In other words, when you get a cold or or a fungal infection or uh, a yeast infection or something like that, your body begins losing even more H minus. 
And so uh, by supplementing it, uh, we were able to return the biological terrain back to something uh, that is more beneficial to the body and less beneficial for the pathogen.